you don't mind, maybe. Oh. Okay, now it's recording. All right. So welcome everyone to Bagels and Best Practice, building strong relationships with young people. I'm happy you're all here today enjoying part of your morning with us. So agenda, we'll do a quick little welcome and introduce Mentor Minnesota. Um, I've got a short little clip. It's kind of a nice little intro to what Mentor Minnesota is all about um, and sort of our grounding foundation in our work and really why um, building strong relationships with young people, why it matters so much. And then I'm gonna introduce you to our participants um, and then highlight some, you know, they'll be highlighting some of their amazing programs and their work that they're doing. And then a little time for Q&A at the end. So again, welcome, we're thrilled that you're joining us today. And in the chat, if you, we invite you to share your name, pronouns, the program or the organization that you're here with and a hobby or skill that you enjoy. Just a way for you to kind of get to know each other. And with that, I'm gonna send it over to Sarah. Look at this high tech right here. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sarah Schaefer. I'm the executive director at Mentor Minnesota. I'm so glad that you're here and that you stayed with us despite our internet crashing. It is an adventure, um, but I am really passionate about this work and I'm uh, excited to hear how everybody is thinking through this topic. So I'll pass it to Emily, our new program director. I'm Emily Gare. I use she, her pronouns. Again, I'm a fairly new to the Mentor Minnesota family, but I'm excited to be here and to um, be in such great company with such a, an amazing team and um, I'm working with programs that support our young people. I came from an education background and um, so building strong relationships with young people is something that I've always felt very passionate about. Um, and I've seen really the impact that that can have. And I'm gonna pass it over to our amazing um, program coordinator, Vista, Miss Alley. Hello, I sort of introduced myself while you were gone, but I'm Alley. Oh. Um, I am the program coordinator, Vista. I'm mostly working on capacity building and like storytelling kind of. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming everyone. Thanks, Ali. I appreciate that and that you helped us. If you, we just started recording after, but we are, you know, having some technical issues. So I'm running off of a hotspot right now. So if it's a little bit laggy, I do apologize and we'll just continue to improve. You can only go up from here, right? All right. So a little bit about Mentor Minnesota since 1994. Mentor Minnesota has been the convening leader for mentoring organizations really across, you know, across the state of Minnesota. Um, we support over 200 programs in the network of Mentor Minnesota, supporting best practice and youth development. So how do we support best practice and youth development? And that's we have um, free technical assistance that's provided through the NMRC, which stands for the National Mentoring Resource Center. We offer um, group trainings um, and trainings for different organizations and programs that work with, um, with all different um, types of mentoring programs and other youth development. Um, leadership convening, so we have a program services uh, council and um, really plan to kick off some committee work too. And that's just trying to build out our programming throughout um, Minnesota and really stretching our reach and um, supporting programs all across the state and really the Midwest. Um, and then that another re way that we um, support best practices through advocacy and really advocating for young people, um, just knowing that they have all of these really inherent talents and value um, and really want to elevate youth voice and really fostering um, their leadership and, and advocating for them in any way that we can. And again, we, um, would love you to jump into our website at some point and check it out. Our amazing Vista Alley, who you've you know learned a little bit more about her a couple of times this morning, but she did an amazing job revamping our website. And so that's a work in prog progress as well as we are building out this program calendar and hope that um, we can invite more people to the table. I'm gonna just play a, a quick little clip to kind of level set this morning and um, it's just a nice way to kick things off. 
What if we all decided to turn up our impact? What if you could make a difference in someone's life while enriching your own? What if all it took was saying yes? It's not about being a perfect role model. It's about showing up. Your effort, your time, it means more than you know. Seemingly ordinary moments together evolve into something extraordinary. Mentoring amplifies change, one relationship at a time. Seeing the world through each other's eyes, two hearts open and two lives are changed forever. Join the mentoring movement. Together, we can expand opportunity and transform perspectives. So let's raise our voices to amplify possibility, connections, exploration, joy, community, and change. Because together, we can make the world a place of opportunity for all. Are you ready? What if so great, I wanted to play it a couple of times for you. Um, but again, that was provided from Mentor National. <clears throat> so Mentor Minnesota is an affiliate of the Mentor National Network. Um, and I did put together some resources that I'll be sharing out with all of you. And definitely they have a, uh, Mentor National has a, a great support system and a, a plethora of resources. So they're a great, a great um, organization to have in our corner. Um, with that, I know that we may have lost a couple of folks um, due, our, due to our technical issues, but I know that um, Tanya is here from Youth in Action. Um, she's the program manager at Clues. So if Tanya, if you don't mind, I'm gonna kick it over to you to kind of start us off and give um, folks a couple, a little bit more time to see if we can get them back into the call. Um, if not, then I'll pivot and I've got um, some other things that I'll provide all of you with. But with that, I would love you um, to take over. And oh, I can stop. Okay. Yeah, would you like me to stop sharing my screen? Yeah, you can just take it off. That's fine. And I won't be okay. sharing anything um, Perfect. on there. We can just kind of look at each other. So also, I'd, I'm going to be inviting some conversations. So if you are able to turn your cameras on, I think that'd be really nice. Um, so I also was having internet issues this morning and could not get logged on. So I don't know what was going on, but I got on the call and I was like, oh, I'm in good company. So um, thank you all for being here and um, just taking the time to think about what it it looks like to build strong relationships with young people. Um, it was kind of cool hearing some of the introductions as I was popping on, you know, whether people are here as funders, you know, people who are working in programs, maybe you're doing mentoring on your own, um, and, or maybe you're leading trainings, things like that. Uh, it was just kind of cool to hear the different um, perspectives that are here. And I hope that with what we share today, that it is helpful kind of no matter where, where you're seated and kind of what your um, kind of inroads are with mentoring. Um, I hope that, you know, you are able to take some of the things that we talk about today, whether it's shared by presenters or shared by others, and think about how that impacts your own level of engagement and your own, um, your own work or kind of, again, that, that in that you have, um, and that you're able to incorporate it into the trainings you lead or the projects you fund or, um, kind of your own mentoring perspective. Um, so I kind of wanted to actually kick things off more with a conversation. I know I'm also not a morning person, and so getting to engage with each other hopefully is helpful as we get this um, meeting going. But um, I just wanted everyone to take a minute and think back to your own youth uh, years and to think back to maybe when you were a teenager and who were those people in your life that you remember made a difference or that stood out or that saw you or supported you um, outside of your immediate family. I know a lot of, you know, our own family members, I hope that I am an amazing mentor to my nieces and nephews. Like I, that is something I'm super passionate about. But let's think outside of our own families of who were those people that really made a difference in your life or really supported you as you kind of journeyed through your childhood or your youth years, your teen years. Um, and I want you to think about kind of who that person was and what that connection was, how that came to be. Because right, we're surrounded by, you know, as youth, we're surrounded by adults all over the place in school, sports, different things like that. But there are certain people that really do make an impact or that, that stick with you or um, that support you even more. Um, and so think about who they were, how they got to be one of those people in your life. Um, think about how they made you feel. 
when you were in their presence, when they were there with you? Think about how they showed that they cared. What were the ways that you knew that they really genuinely cared about you? And then think a little bit too about how you communicated with each other. How did they communicate with you? What were the, the things that you, that you remember about kind of the engaging with them? Hope everyone kind of has someone in mind and some of these, you know, memories are flooding back a little bit, remembering yourselves as maybe an awkward teenager or <laughs> that type of thing and, and who they were. And I would love for people just to take a couple minutes to share about what, what those things were, you know, who that person was, how you were connected, how they made you feel, how they showed they cared and what that communication with them looked like. Is there anyone who's willing to start? I can start. Um... I had an English teacher, and he was also our school counselor. I came from a very small school in North Dakota, um, very small. There were 75 people in the whole town. Um, and his name was Cliff Peterson. And what I remember most about him is that he was so open to, you know, different ideas which was not necessarily in a small North Dakota town, all that acceptable. Um, I remember talking at that time about, you know, wanting to wanting to go to school and wanting to meet people from different races. And my goal at the time, I remember, was to be an actress. And, uh, and he just instilled confidence in me and I think showed me that there are things that may seem impossible but aren't and um yeah I just all these years later he still sticks with me thank you for sharing and and um I think kind of like you said it's kind of incredible right the impact that one person yeah. can have and just the way that they support you or engage with you um, and I hope too, as everyone's listening to others share that they're thinking through what are those qualities? What are those things that that person did? Or what is the way that they acted or the way that they engaged that really stood out? Because I think as each person shares, we're gonna take learnings away of how those people built strong relationships um, with the people that they mentored and, and supported. So listen for those things as everyone shares. Is there anyone else who's willing to share a little bit? Sure, I, had, I, had a, I had two good mentors. One was the, my scoutmaster that uh, forced me to do things beyond what I thought was possible. Um, and he did it in a very loud way. Um, he, he was a little rough, but it worked, it worked out great. And I had a, I pumped gas. You guys won't believe this, but I had a job where I pumped gas. I mean, that's a long time ago. Um, and the mechanic, uh, again, he was very loud but he made sure I did what I was supposed to do and I appreciated it. I mean, he, both of them yelled at me a lot, but I loved it. <laughs> and, and they, you could tell they really wanted to help. So. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting to think of everyone's unique ways and even thinking of the ways that, you know, I'm sure there are people on the call like, oh my gosh, if someone was yelling at me, that would not work. But in your situation, you're like, hey, that's what I needed. And I knew he cared. So I helped me get things done, you know? So that's yeah, also something. Yeah, I was, a, I was a goofball and I needed, needed that direction. Anyone else who's willing to jump in, share a little bit? I can share. Um, so the people that I thought about were um, people that were, it was a husband and wife couple, and they were my youth group leaders at church. And it wasn't so much that they were like a godly influence in my life. They were just good quality people. And high school was kind of rough for me. I just didn't fit in. Like I didn't have like a click or like any of that, but like when I came to youth group, like I felt like I had a place where I belonged and I felt like I had a place where I was worthy just because they were open they were being in, like inclusive to everyone. And I even spent time with, 
with them in a friend that I made a youth group at their house, it would, even if it wasn't, you know, that youth group time. And um, I still stay in contact with them today. Um, so it's a really special relationship that I have built with them. I resonate basically completely with everything you just said. You kind of <laughs> took what I'm going to be sharing in a minute. <laughs> so I have a very similar story with that. So that's awesome to hear um, the ways that they were inclusive, um, not only for the group, but also for the individual. Anyone else want to share? I can share. Um, in high school, like I played Frisbee. Um, and we had a few like coaches that were like probably just a few years older or maybe like six years older than us. Um, but they're all like really cool women that would like invite us over to their houses or like ask us to cat sit and stuff. And they all like made a big effort. Like if they were driving us to tournaments to like talk to us about our lives and stuff. So I feel like just having that, like actually caring about us like what, what's going on in our life and not making us feel like children I guess like yeah that's that's my example awesome it's kind of cool something that's standing out to me right now is everyone sharing is like hearing a work connection hearing a sports connection hearing someone who's a couple years older versus someone who's quite a bit older you know like all of these different potential um, kind of the connection places of where those relationships even start from. It doesn't have to necessarily be through a formal mentoring program. Um, and it can be, you know, it can be that kind of leadership role. Um, anyone else? I can share. Hi, my name's Ladeja Lippincott. I'm a 27 year old youth development specialist, and I'm currently in the Washington, D.C. area. So when I was young, I moved around a lot. Um, so when I got into high school, I really didn't have a set of friends because I moved around so much. I put myself into a mentoring after school program and a work for or workforce program. One of the greatest things I can say about them is being placed in a workforce program. I got to learn, learn, learn the mistakes not to make in a work and when you're work, in a working environment, as well as being a part of their program, I became their poster child because I then started working for them. So I was the kid, they walked around the building saying, hey, she's a, a product of our success, as well as, hey, now she works for us. So I did <clears throat> pretty much a lot of community service events and everything to give back to the youth. I could, so if it wasn't for them, I honestly didn't know that mentor programs existed. I always thought that it was, if you wanted to work with students and develop youth, you had to be inside of the school setting to know that there's that background outside of it was amazing. That's awesome to hear. Thank you for sharing. I think it's really cool too, the ways that like, even as you kind of grew up within that situation that you became a mentor for others where others were then able to look at you and your success story and kind of all of the opportunities that you took and engaged with to, um, you know, keep moving up, move ahead, that type of thing, and to um, use all of your strengths and, and abilities. Um, so that's really awesome. Anyone else? I love hearing from everyone. It's really cool to think of that. All the people that impacted even the few people here in the room that helped us get to where we are today. I would like to share. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Alicia. And um, I was involved in Upper Bound back in high school. So having that um, Upper Bound advisor kind of um, like assisting me into which pathway I wanted to go, if I wanted to go to college or not, like he was very um, open to my decision and just allowing me to have that like re self um, actualization and that self realization, like what is best for me. Awesome. Thank you for sharing the ways that that mentoring program also really made an impact and helped develop you. If there's anyone else that really wants to, I'm not going to make everyone share if you don't want to, that's fine. But I do want to make sure that if you're really excited to share about your own journey, that you have that opportunity. Anyone else want to jump in? 
All right. Well, if you uh, do have something that came to mind, um, feel free to also drop that in the chat so we can kind of keep going with the conversation. But again, you can highlight who those people were or what that impact was that they had. Um, kind of like I mentioned before, uh, Mariah, I think, was talking about the youth group leaders. For me, that's who, who stands out the most in my mind was a couple youth group leaders that I had, and one in particular, her name is Nancy. Um, and it's very similar, like high school is fine. I didn't love it. I didn't have, like I had good friends, but like we weren't super close or anything, you know, so I didn't really love that space. Um, and even in my youth group, it was like in a different town. So I didn't know a lot of them, you know, and so I just didn't like fully feel like I fit in in any of those spaces and just like didn't love that time of my life necessarily. It was fine, but didn't love it. Um, but I really appreciated the ways that not only, you know, again, kind of in that space, they created that opening, welcoming environment where it was okay to ask questions or okay to be your unique, weird self, you know, that type of thing. Um, but the ways that I really felt seen and known and that they cared about me as an individual as well, you know, and her in particular, her daughter was another one of them too. Um, but, you know, like I said, kind of the asking questions was okay. Like it was all right if you had doubts or questions or just didn't really know what <laughs> about something, you know, where they, it was okay to do that and not, like you weren't made to feel bad about that. Um, I think too, that just felt really like unconditionally loved in that way um, where, you know, if you're, if you don't have your best moment, you know, like you maybe have a little attitude at this time or whatever, but you're continued to be like accepted by them and encouraged and supported so that you also like felt like you were in a good space and didn't have to go back to acting that way or struggling with those types of things in the same way. Um, also felt very challenged and like both encouraged and challenged um, by her to grow more into myself. And like one of the things that I also remember is just the ways that she like named things in me, which helped me to like live into that even more confidently. I remember she was, uh, she had such like a great listening ear and would listen to me just like ramble about life or issues with my mom or like <laughs> whatever um, came up. Um, but she always was just there to listen and was really welcoming into her home or, you know, like, um, help me to feel comfortable. And just, I knew that she saw me like for who I was and she loved me for and despite who I was. <laughs> um, and so I think that she's someone, you know, that definitely stands out to me and who, um, again, whether it's like little messages on Facebook or something is always so encouraging um, as life goes on, even as we've, you know, grown apart, um, that she still holds a really special place in my life. So um, that's kind of where my mind goes. And I see, you know, that a couple of people are putting things in the, in the chat as well. So definitely check that out for um, what people are sharing there. Um, anyway, as I was thinking about building strong relationships, I think that a lot of the kind of little tips that I'm going to share aren't like, crazy uh, profound necessarily and it makes a big difference and it's super important to be intentional about it and think through what are those things again no matter where you are engaging with mentoring I think that um, you know whether you're a funder and kind of looking which programs to fund like looking for programs that are doing these types of things that are creating those spaces where students do really feel loved and accepted and supported um, you know is really important um, or again in your own in your own mentoring, in your own programming? How are you building some of these things in? I think when we do our um, mentor orientation and training at the beginning of the year, one of the things that we talk about is really how you get to model what a healthy, strong relationship looks like, what communication looks like, all of those different things. First and foremost, for remembering, even if you feel awkward, even if you're just like, oh, how do I do this? Or it's like a new relationship or it's a tricky, situation or there's frustration within it, whatever that is, you get to, and it is your responsibility to model how to get through um, those challenges or how to have that healthy communication. And so always remembering that. I know sometimes, you know, when we're like, okay, mentors, it's time to go meet the families or time to have your first meeting with your student. And they just are so awkward themselves. And they like carry all of that where it's like, okay, all right, adults, here we go. We can do this. Like, yes, those feelings are real and valid and all of that, but what you can do to help build a healthy, strong relationship right now is to 
be the adult and be the role model in that situation. And it's okay to show some of that. But then how do you work through that, right? It's okay to be like, hey, this is kind of nerve. Like, I'm kind of nervous and this is a little bit awkward. And let's do this anyway. Let's have fun anyway. I'm super excited to get to know you, you know? And so really thinking through in any of those situations, how do you model the type of relationship that you are looking to grow? Um, and when you do that, it allows for them to do the same. We do a funny little activity at the beginning of our mentor orientations each year where we do introductions and we're just like, hi, I'm Tanya and I work at Clues, you know, and then the next one, like, hi, I'm Natalia and I work at Clues. And then we're like, okay, now do your introductions. And everyone goes around and does like a really boring, awkward little introduction that does not matter. No one's remembering anyone's names, zero connection, anything like that. And then a little while later, you know, we kind of go start with the orientation a little while later little while later we come back to it and then we're kind of like all right talking about being role models or being or modeling I should say that communication or how to build a relationship and we try it again and we kind of say like what did you what did you remember from before and now I'm Tanya and I work at Clues and here's how I got here and here's something I'm passionate about and here's where I grew up and went to college and da 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 you know like do kind of a more thorough introduction and then we go around again, it's like, okay, now go. And they follow exactly what we do. Again, it's the most basic thing. We've done this a million times in these Zoom meetings and you know that you basically usually do what the first person does. So same in a relationship where you're trying to build a strong relationship with uh, youth, right? The way that you model communication, the way that you share about yourself or the way that you work through awkward situations or tough conversations, shows them how they're able to do that or that it's okay to do that. And again, it doesn't mean it's gonna go perfect every time or anything like that, but you modeling it and, and showing how to go about that makes such a difference. And so first and foremost, I feel like in any type of interaction, that is one of the things that um, really stands out is a kind of a tool to use um, and just something to remember and something that you sometimes need to just make a really conscious choice about to kind of check yourself with that. Um, I think actively listening is something else. Again, we all know these things, but it's easy as a mentor too to like jump in and want to solve or want to help or want to give your suggestion or give your advice for things. But really being a good listener is also super important to understand where they're coming from, to understand what they're actually trying to communicate. We do another little thing in our orientation about um, like how, they might explain a situation to you. And if you jump into problem solving mode, you really might miss what they're trying to communicate to you. They might be just talking about how they feel really bad about how they messed up in this situation. They might know what they need to do to fix it already, but maybe they're wanting to share more about the feelings that are behind it. Or, you know, you just might make a wrong assumption also and, and kind of take things in a different direction with where they were trying to go. And so how are you being an active listener and how are you asking open-ended questions to help get to that deeper communication, to help build that trust with them, to show that you genuinely care and you genuinely not want to know what they're thinking or feeling or processing. Um, and so being careful with that too, I think it's really easy also to like, especially if you're nervous to ask like closed-ended questions, to ask yes or no questions. And you're it, like, that's not good communication. You're not going to get the stories. You're not going to build the connection that you want if you're out of your own like nerves asking some of those questions. And so how are you being creative in the ways that you communicate as well to like invite a story, invite them to share more deeply. And even if they're giving you those like closed answers, how are you then modeling again, how to like give some details when you give an answer? Don't just, you know, like give the short version. How do you, how do you invite some more conversation? And so even if they're not asking it, how do you sort of invite and model that um, through your own communication? Um, the other thing that really stood out was thinking about being vulnerable. And again, there, you know, you need to figure out what that healthy boundary looks like in that, but how are you vulnerable in your own situation? Whether again, it's like showing like some nerves sometimes and, and showing how to work through it, or it's sharing a little bit more deeply about a challenge. Um, again, I, you know, a few of us, as we were sharing, kind of said like, this wasn't a great time in my life, or, you know, I was this kind of way and like to even show like, I'm not perfect. You know, <laughs> I have things that I'm working through or things that I'm struggling with or whatever. And again, you figure out where that healthy, healthy boundary is. But if you're able to model that vulnerability and it invites them to do the same, it helps build trust, it helps build connection, um, a lot of different things for that. 
something else that really stands out is thinking about being intentional with like having and sharing new experiences together and building memories together. Um, and I know some programs or situations might be a little bit more limiting and the types of things you're able to do, but I think it's super cool when we have mentor matches. Um, I didn't even share about our program. You can, I'll, I'll drop the link. You can look us up later if you want to know more about it. But I think as we have our matches go out into the community together, really encourage them to try new things together and learn from each other. And you know, do something that both of you have never done before or help the student do something that they've never done before because of the ways that you build that connection and those shared memories and kind of have that as a foundation to like go from. Um, and so uh, I think that that is always a really um, cool thing. I know I love sitting across us from a, a student at a coffee table and just like having deep conversation. That's not everyone's jam or like, Sometimes you need something to help like build that connection or build that, um, again, like deepen or do something different or um, engage in a different way uh, to really um, form an even stronger bond with each other. I think too, it's, it's again, kind of a tricky balance and depending on the situation, thinking through your relationship, like yes, you're the adult and they're the youth and that does need to also be a thing you know, where you, you do need to be the role model in a lot of ways and you do need to um, be an adult in some tough moments, which could mean something like mandated reporting or, you know, like there is there is that line. And I think the more that your relationship often in, in a lot of situations, again, this might not fit everything, the more it has more of a friendship feel of like, I genuinely want to be with you. I'm not here because I have to, or because I have all these things to like wisdom to impart upon you and that's it but I genuinely enjoy being with you. I genuinely like want to know what's going on in your life. And I want to share as well. You know, I think too, having some of that back and forth again with appropriate boundaries makes a lot of sense in a lot of situations. Um, and even thinking through your communication, are you only communicating them with them when you have to? Or are you showing, again, depending on the situation, if it's appropriate, are you showing throughout the month, like, hey, you're on my mind, or hey, I saw this funny meme and thought of you, or, you know, like, just want to check in, how are things going, or check up on the thing that we talked about last time, how are you doing some of those things, so it doesn't feel like uh, it's only for, you know, like, when it's forced, when you, when you are obligated to talk with them, but no, you genuinely are like, hey, what's up, how's it going, you know, and want to connect. Um, kind of that consistency, I think, is also important that goes right along with what I was just saying, that that you're someone who's not in and out and that type of thing, but you're someone who is like a constant and then you know that they can count on and they can trust. Um, I think showing up, showing up in tough moments, showing up for special events, just kind of showing up um, is something else that um, really stands out and that helps to show your, your commitment and that your relationship is something that is valued. Um, and that they can count on, they can look forward to um, being a part of, I think, celebrating both big wins and small, whether it is, again, you're showing up at graduation or at a birthday party or that type of thing, again, when appropriate, um, or some of the smaller things, you know, maybe you have a really shy student and they speak up, how are you celebrating that with them when you saw them intentionally step out of their comfort zone or do something that, you know, wasn't what they normally do? Um, when you are seeing growth in them in a different mindset, you're seeing their, their mindset kind of grow and change and expand as you, you know, journey through time with them. How are you helping name those things for them to be like, you see me and you're encouraging me and you're calling that out and I feel more confident, you know, even through some of those things. Um, yeah, I think too, there are challenging moments that come and I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, challenging moments that come. And so how do you work through them? How do you, again, even in your own frustration and communication issues or whatever it might be, how are you modeling how to work through challenges and, and showing like, we can get through this and we, you know, like, here's how we're going to do that, you know, and being open to working through that, modeling it um, and navigating that with the student. Um, I think again, just the modeling can do so much um, on, on both ends. And it's often hard to kind of check yourself in that, but um, um, really important to do. Um, the last couple things are um, thinking, you know, taking that time to reflect with them, um, to share the growth that you have seen in the proud moments. Again, I kind of named that a little bit, but really kind of pausing to just like reflect on like what the relationship is or where they're at in their journey, how they're uh, moving forward. Um, and 
that can just be really meaningful. And again, a way to show them that they're seen and known. Um, naming the potential that you see in them and the qualities that you see in them, helping give language to those things, helping to help the, helping them to know that you see these amazing things in them will help them to feel more connected to you. And again, even more connected to themselves and confident to move forward from that. Um, I think too, kind of beyond maybe, especially if it's more of a formal thing, sort of that, that long-term availability, how are you making yourself available where they're not feeling like a burden? Or even if time does go on and you do drift apart, you know, again, that youth group leader I was talking about, we can pick right back up and just the other day we're sharing about like what her health issues are right now or sharing in a nice moment or when we see each other it's like all right let's get caught up and you're excited about it you know and so how do you also kind of have that openness of like being there even in the long term if if possible of that you are someone who is approachable if they meet a challenge down the road even if you're not connected thinking back to the graduates we have that come back and ask for support that you have that sort of openness in your relationship where they know that you're a safe place to come back to even if kind of that has changed over the years. Anyway, I just want to thank you <laughs> um, for everyone for sharing. And I hope, you know, whether it was, you know, me talking through some of these things or the things that you heard from each other, that you're able to think of the ways that you're able to build strong relationships in your own settings or support um, people building those strong relationships, relationships, because as we heard from each other, they matter so, so much. So anyway, thank you for your time. I will wrap up and hand it off. Yeah, no, amazing. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I think there were, there really wasn't anything that you talked about that I think we all didn't, you know, relate to and find meaningful in our own relationships. Um, so we appreciate you and all the, the valuable conversation that, that you've, you know, helped facilitate. So thank you again. Um, with that, Darius Lyles is here from YMCA Twin Cities and He's amazing. He's amazing at building relationships with young people. Um, I will send out um, resources and links to all of you too. Oh, he says a little, that's so not true. This is your time to brag, dude. Like, it's awesome. I'm so happy you're here and to talk about some of the work that you're doing over at the YMCA. Um, and with that, I'll just kick it over to you. We will probably go a little bit longer, um, but I know some of you folks need to probably jump off, but I'll share this video out, but definitely stay on if you're able to. and. If for some question and answer. But with that, take it over, Darius. Thanks, Emily. Um, I'll be rather brief, actually. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Darius Lyles, and I'm with the YMCA of the North. Um, currently, I lead our Multicultural Achievers Program, um, in which we focus with high schoolers on post-secondary life. Uh, previous to this, for about three years, I led our Career Pathways Youth um, Employment Program. So essentially getting youth uh, hooked up with internships and kind of coaching them through that process. And um, today I'm just gonna share a tool that I began to use with the interns. And then I'm also using now with the Achievers program. Um, it's called MHA Labs. And MHA Labs is a nonprofit based from Chicago. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. It's founded by, um, drawing a blank on her name, so I'm just gonna skip past that. But what she uh, intended to do is create a toolbox for teens um, to arm them with language they can use as they navigate the employment world and post-secondary life in general. Um, the way that she did that, she pulled together a focus group of professionals, teachers, youth, parents, community members, and talked about what are the essential skills that are needed in any career path. Um, and so from that, they created what they call the six building blocks. And that's basically six categories of career skills. Uh, I'll name them personal mindsets, social awareness, collaboration and teamwork, planning for success and time management, verbal communication, and then problem solving. And so if you think about those terms, like those things apply no matter what job you have. Um, and then furthermore, they created a bunch of tools that can help teens to understand how they apply and how to use them um, in real life situations. And so for our career pathways program through the Y, um, it's kind of one of our staples in terms of when we orient the teens, we introduce them to this um, framework and the language. We continue to just bring it up throughout the time that they're doing their internships and talk about the skills and naming the skills that they're 
using their building. Um, and then we also help them to develop resumes. And so, you know, with a lot of them being their first work experience, it's not so much what jobs experiences have you had, but more so what skills do you have? Um, and pushing it beyond what skills do you have is the how do you know? Um, and so being able to answer that question in an interview of tell me about yourself and having a prepared answer. So um, the activity that I wanted to highlight today from MHA Labs is one that's called the Awesome Circle. Um, do I have the ability to share my screen? I think so. I'm going to do that quickly. I think I have it. Okay. It'll let me do it. Perfect. All right. Are you all able to see it? Yes? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'll just start here. This MHA Lab six building blocks, this basically breaks down the specific um, actions or behaviors that belong to each of the mindsets. And so um, this is all of these things are available on the mhalabs.org website, um, if you all are interested in using this later. Um, but yeah, so this breaks down that the specific behaviors and we, and we talk through these um, items with the teens and make sure that they understand how they can use them and why they're important um, in, all, in all different situations. But that's not where I want to highlight. I want to highlight this other part. Um, so this is the power skills and attitude sheet that's available through MHA. And as you can see, it's a list of uh, terms, soft skill terms. And the activity, the awesome circle, um, really highlights these words for the teens. And what it does is MHA labs can provide you or you can create your own um, cards that say the prompt, I am blank because blank. And so we'll distribute those cards, ask the teens to identify a word from the list and fill in that word under the I am blank. So for instance, I am grateful. And then under the because, we'll challenge them to pull out a very specific example from their life where, they, where they've been able to show it. Um, we always mention that it can be something that's rather simple. Um, it could be something that happened today. It can be something that happened in kindergarten. It'd be something that you do all the time or that you've only done once, um, but just making sure that it's from actual experience. And then once everyone has their cards prepared, uh, we simply stand in a circle and kind of similar to what Tanya was saying in terms of how people have the ability to share and kind of take the signal from, you know, the others in the circle. Everyone gets a chance to proudly say what's on their card. After they've stated what's on their card, then it comes a round of affirmation a verbal affirmation from anyone in the circle. So calling out if you've seen that person use that skill before, or just talking about why that's a great skill to have in general. Um, and so as the leaders, of course, during, at the beginning of the awesome circle or like the first awesome circle we do, there's a lot of the adults doing the affirmations and like, you know, kind of leading it. But as we go throughout the summer, what we always notice is that the youth start to dive in and become more affirmative with each other um, calling out the skills that each other possesses, why they see it as a value. Um, and it just creates this culture of everybody just kind of, you know, giving shout outs and, and being really positive uh, with each other. Um, so yeah, it's a really awesome tool, something that we use, like I said, throughout the whole internship, we introduce it at orientation. And then as we go throughout the time together, uh, we use these as well. And we've seen um, in our survey results, our data um, definitely aligns with youth feeling more empowered um, after using a lot of this language. So that's all I have. Just wanted to quickly share that. Curious. Yes. Can I ask the question? So sure. it's, I am because I am, like the first part, it, it, and they're using the chart to, to explore those words and how it relates to them or? Yeah, so the cards, so I, if we were in person, I could literally show you guys. Yeah. It's a little like a note card. Um, MHA Labs, you can order them for like three bucks. You can get like a pack of 150 or something. And it's on the card, it says, I am blank. And so they fill in the word from the, from the list. And then there's a because, and then another blank. So they can write the example of how they know that they have that particular skill. Okay, got it. Got it, thank you. Yeah, no problem. That's awesome. Question. I mean, and I love the idea, you know, even calling it an awesome circle. And I think the affirmation piece is, is so powerful. Not only does the individual have to 
you know, really think about what their own talents um, are and then to have it affirmed by the group. I think, you know, it's such a, such a great way to connect with young people and to yeah, spark those conversations and to talk things through. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, we have a few minutes left. So are there any other questions for Darius or Tanya while we still have them in the house? Um, Darius, um, I did that in reverse between ninth and 10th grade. I, I don't, I didn't have your card, but I, I said, I am not because I am, you know, and then mm -hmm. I said, how am I going to fix this? But mm -hmm. I had a chance that we were, I was changing schools. So I said, I'm not going to be that anymore. I'm going to be this. Um, For I, sure. And so I, your concept is wonderful. That's, that, that's wonderful. I mean, it's just wonderful. Well, I don't want to take credit. Um, it's MHA Labs, but I just found it to be so powerful yeah. and very effective with our teens. I, like you said, it really call, it really challenges them to think about where their talents lie and give them the space to speak on that. I think sometimes in our culture, we are shy to talk about where we're strong, even for Emily introducing me and she's like, he's really great. I'm like, eh, like we just have that thing about us. And so it just creates that space for us to all, you know, just kind of live in where, we, where we're awesome at. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. And yeah, and maybe you don't want to take credit for it, but you're bringing it to the table, Darius. And for that, we appreciate you even more and think you're even more awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions or thoughts or want to share anything else before I know some folks have to take off and head to another meeting too, but I'm happy to stay on or we're Sarah's right next to me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to jinx the internet. So I'm sorry. I've been here listening and, and kind of like cheering with all of these resources. Um, one thing that we can send out later today, and I just saw it in my email is that Search Institute just released a uh, I believe it's a free toolkit. It was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all on developing relationships. Um, so I'll make sure that that, if you're not on their um, listserv, that is, the Search Institute's a great resource, um, but I'll make sure that that's on there because it has a number of, of great kind of resources and research about relationship building. But I just, I want to echo what you said, Darius, this idea about naming what you're strong at and letting people see that. And I think Tanya, you mentioned that too at one point, this idea of like naming something. And I know that Mary Sue, spoke about that in her um when she chatted us i just think that it's underrated this ability to kind of either let somebody else name a strength that you have and as adults being willing to say that to a young person and then letting a young person see that as they're growing and i know that was i didn't share my mentoring experience but that was really critical for me growing up as my music teacher bill whitener was like you are a very caring person and that was my ability to see that. And he said that I was a, a strong-willed person and I kind of let myself see that and own that. Um, and that's just, you know, that has stayed with me. So thank you so much for all these resources. This has been really wonderful. Yeah, and thank you for sticking <laughs> with us through our internet crashing here at our office. Um, but yeah, again, it's so good to see all of you and, you know, value your time and, you know, especially in the middle of the summer, it's early for some folks. So, um, but being part of this conversation, how valuable it really is. And definitely I'll send out resources and extra links um, to all of you on the call. And then we do have a rear recording this. So with that little package, I'll put it all together and then you can share this out with anyone that you think, um, would be interested in listening to the conversation or, um, you know, would benefit from some of the resources we've shared. So, but yeah, I know, I think Murray, you're waving goodbye. Um, but I, I do, I appreciate all of you and definitely for sharing some of your stories with us too and getting to know you all a little bit better. Um, yeah, I couldn't thank you enough and for hanging in there with us this morning, so. And if you do have any additional questions, I'll stay on for a few few minutes as well. So go ahead and um, if you had questions for us, then I'll be here. But if you do need to take off, we totally understand. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, thanks, Darius. Thanks, Tanya. Both of you rock. Just love you so much. I'd give you a big hug if I could. <laughs>
<laughs> an air <laughs> hug, right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All about the love, especially when now my blood pressure is dropping a little bit. That was nothing like <laughs> you gotta be ready to pivot, right? Yeah. 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 All right. See you later. <laughs> okay. Thanks. See you. Allie, do you mind stopping the recording for us?